Hello. 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 Uh, first interview of 2021 coming at you. Woo. <laughs> um, for those who don't know or already know, I'm Haley. I'm Brittany. And we are Passionista Sisters. Passionista. In case you've been living under a rock. In case if you've been living under a rock. Uh, <laughs> Passionista <laughs> Sisters coming at you hot and heavy for 2021. Woo woo. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel and press that like button and give this a thumbs up. Um, and make sure you subscribe so you get some more information on when we post um, new interviews, uh, any news or anything. Um, make sure you're following us on Instagram at passionista underscore sisters, where we post all of our content, fan stuff, and much, much more. So yes. Uh, so today we are interviewing the awesome Sarah Beth Pollock. She has um, done a lot of interviews in the Passion Flicks family. She's interviewed a lot of um, Gabriel's Inferno cast, um, Tosca, um, Julio. Julio. <laughs> um, and she's just done some amazing things. She's also a writer. Um, she conducts articles um, and posts them about shows, books, movies, anything like that. So um, we decided to reach out to her because she's always the one doing the interviews. So might as well turn the tables on her a little bit and get to know her. So yeah, um, yeah. So we're going to talk to her today. So we're really excited. Yay. Um, and I have some fun stuff to show her because she and I have similar interests. So I had to run to the closet and go get it. So I'm hoping that she will like it. So I'm sure she will. I'm sure she will too. But you know, you never know if they, they That's true. one look at you and be like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised we haven't gotten a lot of weird looks, I guess, per se, as to, like, how we are and how we act. <laughs> so we get a lot of, like, laughter, but I'm pretty sure we get a lot of, like, head shaking. Like, mm -hmm. oh, Haley and Brittany, there they go again. <laughs> just, like, Especially me and my mouth. A lot of just, like. Yeah, your um, your mouth gets you in trouble. <laughs> Some it's not in trouble, so but like <laughs> it does. Just, Gold. just just a little, just a little bit. Yeah, not Gold. I don't want to yeah. I'm not gonna say trouble. Maybe more no. so of like some eyebrow it, raise. <laughs> it would get me in trouble if I was like at Passion Con and I said some of the things I said. Probably. Yeah. And Most definitely. Allie would just have to pull you back and say, Brittany, we discussed this. <laughs> we said that you weren't going to do this. Hence why she's going to give me a bodyguard to myself. Your own to keep security. Me away from, my own security to keep me away from Tyler. <laughs> and Julio. And hey, David. You Looks know, good. it might just make them want to try to get closer to us. Because they know that we'll have a bodyguard to hold us back. So maybe they will want to come to us. I don't know. That's true. I could share my bodyguard. That's just wishful thinking, though. It is. So. It's fine. It's fine. Now, if the bodyguard is attractive, then we're going to be in trouble. Yes. <laughs> so hire, like, a 50, 60-year-old like ex marine that like isn't super duper attractive and we'll be fine yeah we just need yeah. someone who's um yeah just like well you don't want them to be like too weird looking because then you don't want to be like thrown off by his like creepiness i guess because yeah. you don't want a creepy bodyguard no but if he comes out looking like Jake from The Protector or something, we're going to have problems. 
That would be just be bad. Like, I don't even know what to say if I could just have Richard be my bodyguard. Say Richard. No, because that'll get you in trouble. (laughs) Richard, just make sure I don't go too close to Tyler. He'll be like, I got you. Well, I guess that would work because technically he's a friend now. Yeah. Of so it would be a friend bodyguard. Yeah. It would just be a friend going, Brittany, calm your butt down. <laughs> but then I was like, hey, you know, I wouldn't mind if he had his arm out in front of me. I'd be like. <laughs> Hang from his biceps. Wee. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, Brittany, without further ado, I am about to pull a Lauren. Pull a Lauren. I'm pulling a Lauren. We have <laughs> Miss Sarah in the waiting room. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready, 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 ready. ready. Are you ready for it? Hello. Hello. Oh, how are you? Good, how are you? I don't think we can hear you very well. It may be your headset. Can you hear me now? A little bit. A little bit. (laughs) It's a little muffled. Can you hear me better now? A little bit, a little yeah. bit better. Yeah, let's do it this way. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> we suck at technology too, so it's very just. <laughs> technology is not my friend. No, it's not. It's not any of our friends. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I hear you. But um, hi, Sarah. I'm Haley. Hi. I'm Brittany. <laughs> hi. It's, it's nice to meet you and see you in real time. I know it's not yeah. in person, but it's in real time. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm so. so how have things been? Uh, pretty good. Just you know, just trying to get through the new year. How are you? How are things on your end? Uh, well, right now it's busy. <laughs> Starting <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. But it's a good busy, so it's not like. We're, we're like nervous about it, but we're not. I don't know if that makes sense, but. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally, I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I, before we obviously get started with anything, we did, I mean, we reached out, you know, social media wise, but we also just wanted to like verbally tell you as well. We just wanted to send our condolences to your family. Oh, thank um, you. With everything that has happened. So oh, it's very you, sad um, to hear. It wasn't, um, it wasn't just uh, you. It was just, there was just so many people that we in the Passion Flux community that have lost people to this terrible virus. And so, but the main thing is, is we do have this community at least <laughs> to, yeah. you know, be there for each other. So. Yeah, absolutely. But. Absolutely. No, it's, it really makes you, it, it makes you realize um, just the power of the community and how many people are out there. And, and um, I know for me personally, like we've been doing the, uh, the Fox's Den Christmas card exchange. So yeah. it was really helpful to like be in the middle of, of losing my mom and then getting all of these wonderful cards from all over the world. And just, you know, just being like, wow, like what a great, like it, it, the timing was terrible. And it was also really special. Yeah. you know like yeah. so it was just it was one of those things so yeah yeah well we just wanted to at least verbally say it to you also yeah. oh, thank you. <laughs> instead of you know just on social media but <laughs> yeah no, thank you. um but yeah so thank you. yeah of course um and I like that you're wearing coincidentally like a passion <laughs> flicks kind of red today I like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah this was this was the closest I could get because it's uh we're having a heat wave so it's like 85 degrees outside so I was like yeah my sweatshirts aren't gonna work right now <laughs> yeah yeah no it's like 50 here in Texas so I have a sweater oh. <laughs> on today <laughs> it's like 20 <laughs> degrees outside oh yeah oh yeah because no it's cold 
<laughs> nope, nope. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, blue skies and um, record-breaking heat right now. So it's, yeah, That's crazy. crazy. Well, and it's weird, I guess, to like um, think of a heat wave in January. <laughs> like you don't typically put those together. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So it's it's very much it's very much uh, very much something that everybody's kind of looking around, going, "Wow, like we've got all this stuff going on, and then we can't go outside, and we can't do anything, and you know, it's just it's it's crazy because like you don't want to open your windows, and then you don't want to like you don't want to be stuck inside, and you can't go out, and you know, yeah, like yeah. all of the like like I mean, technically we can go outside, like there is that, like they they haven't shut us down, cause, like we're in the um, the southern California region so like that makes it even more complicated to go outside but at the same time like they have uh they're like you should go out and you, should, you know like the beaches are open and all that but then you're like but everybody's there so yeah I, I don't want to yeah. go there <laughs> like you're like no nope, go I'm there. good thank you <laughs> yeah yeah I'll just stay in my house it's okay <laughs> I don't want to go where the people are <laughs> yeah I don't know yeah yeah I don't want to go mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> But um, yeah. thank you for uh, taking your time. I know you're probably really busy and stuff. So we wanted to just say thank you for taking your personal time to spend a little bit with us because um, we've just really liked your work My and pleasure. have been following you for a little bit. So we wanted to just to reach out and get to know you more because you're always the one doing the interviews. So we figured we would turn <laughs> the tables on you a little bit. <laughs> so. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> I know it's so weird because yeah. usually we see it in like a grid like with your face, but usually there's like Julio or Melanie or Tosca. So it's really weird to see us like in the same <laughs> us in the same grid as you. It's same great. grid. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, I know, but it's fun. I like it. We're super thankful. Yeah. Well, and I figured too, like, um, you know, I don't know if you've been approached this way either of like, you know, a fan account wanting to get to know you or, you know, wanting to know about what you do and everything like that. So, yeah, no, it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's always fun to, um, to talk with people. I, I actually, I talked with, uh, the Emerzoom people and I was like, they're special guests. And I'm yeah. like, you guys, I'm not even special. Like, just don't, I'm not even like that special. Yes, you yeah. are. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> you're, you're special to the Passion Flix community. You're special yes. to us. So. <laughs> I'm so used to being on the other side yeah. of the, the question. So it's like, so it, I was like, wow, it, it's, I, I, I'm not used to this. So you guys have made me feel like just, it's, it's such an incredible feeling. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Well, cause you know, you, you put in, you know, your hard work into doing everything that you do. So it, you know, you need to have that opportunity to be appreciated and to be told that, you know, you're doing a good job and we, you know, there are people out there that do appreciate what you do. So yeah, yeah. you need some recognition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah. And so do you. You guys are so yeah. like so positive. And I love everything that you guys do. It's just so it's always so much fun to see uh -huh. your your videos and just you know you're always smiling and it's just it's it's so nice knowing that if you're ever having a bad day you just have to watch one of your videos and it's just an instant smile. Aww. Oh, good. Thanks. Hey, <laughs> that's what we strive for. We literally try to just be like this positive, upbeat fan account that anyone can just like stumble across and just feel like you're one of us, like you're part of the family <laughs> pretty <Yeah>. much. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. And I think too, our main goal is to try to just get, um, more um of our followers involved with everything because we want like we get like their points of view on things their opinions we want to know more about what they want to see or what you know they want to happen and stuff like that so because we're coming at it as a fan account like perspective we want fan input too so um just trying to make everyone feel involved in the process i think is what has made it um be a success so far so yeah, absolutely oh, cool 
Cool. But yeah, so without further ado, Miss Sarah, we have some questions for you. A mixture of what we want to know and what we've asked our followers who they want to know about you as well. Um, yes. So we know you like superheroes. We know this. <laughs> so who is your favorite superhero and what would your superpower be if you had one? Wow. Um, so my favorite superhero would have to be Batman. And uh, if I had to be any superhero or if I had to have a superpower, oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I know that like mind reading would be so much fun, but I feel like that would be really dangerous because I don't yeah. really think anyone should know what other people are thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, probably flying like that would just like how cool would that be to be able to fly anywhere I would love right. that I think I would be would stuck with Batman can fly but you know yeah I think I would be stuck between like flight and teleportation like one of those two mm -hmm. like just teleport somewhere instead of having to like drive <laughs> or anything just be like whoop okay <laughs> my, but, mine is invisibility <laughs> I would get in trouble though Brittany, you would get in so much trouble for invisibility. So much trouble, but it would be so much fun and worth it. <laughs> Can feel like if you get <laughs> if you get a random poke, then that's Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like oh, that's Brittany. There she is. I can see it. I'll just go to Rome and then be like, "Hey, you go. Can't see me. I'm invisible. I'm invisible. Poke." <laughs> But, Miss Sarah, I'm glad that you said, because I'm kind of a nerd about this. Not as, I don't think, as intense as you are, which I'm jealous of your ability to be so fanatic about this. But I'm a huge Batman fan, too. So I wanted to show you <laughs> some of my, oh my gosh. Batman things. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That is so cool. And then I have... Cool. I have like all of these to you, all my little comics that I have too. Oh, that's <laughs> so, awesome. I love it. I, I was like, it. she likes DC too. <laughs> so, funny story. I actually got to go, um, I got to go to the DC, the DC Comics offices up in Pasadena. And when you, when you go into the building, it, um, it's like right next to Warner Brothers. And it's like this building with like Lionsgate Cinema and like all of these these different things and then like you know like businesses like it's it's not a just a studio bu building you go up on the elevator and the elevator opens and there's this wall of comics it's like a comic shop and you can take whatever you want which I didn't know at the time so I spent like five minutes coming off the elevator and just looking around going wow this is so cool so finally the security guard comes around he's like um are you Sarah Beth and I was like yeah and he's like can I help you with something I was like no I'm still trying to take it in he's like oh honey you haven't even made it in the lobby yet <laughs> and so I walk out into the oh lobby and they've got all the bat suits and like Henry Cavill's suit from Superman like all of these just it's like a museum and it was just wow. it was so much fun I was up there to uh to interview uh an artist for DC Direct and so they handed they gave me like a ton of statues like I walked out with like these boxes full of like the, the statues from their from his line and it was it was just it was so much fun wow but, I was like completely fixated on the fact that you just walk off the elevator and there were just comics everywhere. And, and they're like, take whatever you want. And I was like, you guys, I just got all of my comics. I have my weekly pull list, you know? And, and they were like, yeah. we love that. Like, we love that. I was like, there's nothing I need because I read them all. And so it was just, it was one of those things, but it was, it's such a cool Aww. place. I love this is so much fun. That's, That's so crazy. <laughs> I would have done the same thing, just like walked around, just like yeah, that was that was like a. Life. <laughs> oh yeah, no, it's it's insane. It's I mean, if if you have any interest in in any of that stuff, like it's it's like a dream come true. Their office is just amazing, and I've like I've been to um like during Comic Con, like I've gone to their events and things, and like and those are cool, and like you know, and I've talked like I've talked to Jim Lee and, and like all of the people like. I've interviewed a lot of the artists and stuff, and I love I love that. But the office was just something because you can't just go yeah. to the office; you have to have a reason to get into the office. And uh, yeah, I will I will I'll never forget that. That was just it was so much fun. 
That's so, so awesome. I would love to just see all the bat suits and just like, <laughs> just see all of them lined up. <laughs> well, I know which one's like Haley's favorite bat suit. <laughs> I have my own favorite bat suits. Mm -hmm. Do you have a favorite bat suit, Sarah? Or did you, did you like them all? <laughs> I mean, I, I like them all, but some are, are better than others. Um, for sure. Um, yeah, they all, they all have their merits, I guess though, but yeah. Which, who's, which one is yeah. yours? So <laughs> I like, <laughs> I have like, I have two favorites. I really like the George Clooney one. Okay. That suit in particular, just like the abs and just the butt. <laughs> it's just really nice to look at. <laughs> the, the nipples. It's the only <laughs> nipples. Brittany went ahead Don't and said it. <laughs> yeah, she said it. She has no shame. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. That's why it's my favorite. I know. Um, and then I think the other one that I liked was um, – I, I kind of liked Christian Bale's suit because it was a little, like, more modernized, I guess. So I kind of liked his suit a little bit more. But I liked, like, it had more utility also to it, too. Like, there's just more, like, things to it also. So, but, yeah, no, George Clooney is my number one bat suit. Oh. <laughs> that I like. That's so cool. That is so cool. I'll have to send you pictures. I went to, a, um, when they did the Batman 80th anniversary, they had all the bat suits lined up at this party. And... So they had they had three Batmobiles and all of the oh. bat suits from all of like the TV shows and everything. It was so cool. I'll send I'll send you pictures. I took pictures up close of all of the different ones. It was just it was yes. so much fun. Oh. Yeah. Yes, send us those. <laughs> yeah, because like you know, because like. I read these books about these like billionaires with the really nice cars. And I'm like, I don't care about the Ferrari. Give me the Batmobile. I want to ride in that. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it's like, I don't care about any other car. I want the Batmobile. <laughs> I'm right there with you. <laughs> totally. Just give me the Batmobile. Take me to your cave. <laughs> That's all you need. That is all you need. I want to get Jack All we need. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we know that you love DC, and I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. Well, I was before my favorite character died. I'll just do that. Um, but where did your love of pop culture come from? Um, you know, it's hard. That's a great question. I've I've always loved, um, I didn't really think of it as pop culture, maybe. I just kind of liked, I, I, I grew up with a lot of science fiction. So I kind of started when I was like around 10 or 11 with Star Trek. And at that point, like they had Star Trek conventions everywhere. It wasn't just in Las Vegas the way it is now. Mm -hmm. So instead of going to comic con, I'd go to Star Trek conventions. And I was like, wow, this is really cool. There's all these people who like the same thing I like. And it was this really cool yeah. community and everything. And, and you know, and, and fandoms are so cool anyway. Like, the, like the, the good part of fandoms. Yeah. Like, yeah. For having, you know, because there, there is a difference in any fandom. But, you yeah. know, being around people who enjoy the same things you like, like, that's just, you can't beat that. Yeah. And, um, right. So I really, that's what kind of showed me, like, hey, this is really neat. And so Star Trek led to ironically not Star Wars like I didn't watch Star Wars until I was god in my 20s I think I just I couldn't it, it wasn't Star Trek so I just didn't yeah get it you know um I I don't know why I just I, I couldn't get into it um you know but I grew up going to Disneyland all the time and and um yeah so it was always kind of there without realizing like that it was a fandom type of thing yeah and um but I think you know the more the more I, the older I got, like the, the more of an adult I became, the more I realized, like, I liked having that as an escape. And then, um, yeah, kind of like, so a fun fact about me. So I worked for 10 years as, as an assistant athletic director, which was like totally not something that yeah. was planned. It just kind of happened. And so working with, you know, working in 
college athletics is, is a very different life. And so that was always like my escape was pop culture. And so I'd go to Comic-Con and the coaches were like, why are you doing that? Like, that's so weird. Like, you know, that's what nerds do. And I'm like, well, I guess no, I'm a not. nerd, but I also like, I, yeah. I also, you know, like, like sports, you know? And so it, it was, it, it was such a part of my identity. I didn't think about it. And then when I left college athletics, I just totally embraced pop culture in a way that I couldn't before. So that's what I, that's where I am now. So yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to go to Comic-Con. Yeah. Just to see what it's uh, like. Yeah. Just to see what it's like. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And I, I guess cause I'm spoiled cause I live here. So it's like, you don't think of it. It's just something yeah. that happens. Yeah, and, and it used like I I remember the days like I feel like an old person saying like I remember when you used to just walk in and <laughs> you know like you go to school and you'd be like oh I'm gonna go I'm gonna go to Comic Con now like do you want to go and then you just do it and then um yeah you know I camped overnight for tickets one year because I, I wanted to make sure we got in the following year so I spent the night behind the convention center just to get tickets um for the following year of all things and uh, it's so much fun though yeah. it is so much fun and. And hopefully you guys will get a chance to do it. You totally should do it. Like you guys should, um, you can yeah. apply for press passes. You should totally do it. Cause like you've got a fan account. Like you should, you should do it. You should go. Holy yeah. Shit. Yeah. Just do it. Just go. <laughs> I'll geek out around all just the do it. people. I'll just be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've always just wanted to go just because it's just, I know it's a different experience than like, uh, like a like a football game where like everyone loves that team but it's like this is so specific that everyone just loves that particular thing and it's like and everyone's a, like a nerd over it and they're so passionate about it and it's just like I want to be around passionate people <laughs> so mm-hmm. yeah and that is a place to do it and and I mean conventions in general are just so much fun and um like I'm on the fence I'm, I'm thinking yeah. about going to passion con because I, I really I want to. Um, you totally should. should. Totally yeah. should. Yeah. Totally. I'm, I'm We're going. What? We're going. So. I know. So I'm so excited you guys are going. I was like, I, I feel like that would be fun. Just the completely different type of fandom. Like, I would love to see that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, you should. We v- We're vouching for you. You should go. Yeah. <laughs> you should. It'll be a party. It'll be a party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely. Yes. I, I can only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> now when Brittany and I are around it's either trouble or it's a party or both <laughs> so that's pretty nothing accurate. wrong with that <laughs> you won't be bored you won't be bored <laughs> so <laughs> please tell you that <laughs> nope especially if there's alcohol involved you won't be bored <laughs> I love it um, I love it <laughs> It's it's gonna be so much fun. I, I really hope you decide to go because it'll be it'll be fun. It'll be yeah. super awesome. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then I did I did want to share another similar interest that you and I have that I got really excited about. Um, I know you only have like one. I think you only have like one post about her, but I don't know if you like have read her collection or not. Um, but the author Lauren Lane. Um, I really like her. Um, I saw that you had like the the Central Park, Madison Square, yeah. whatever that that series. Um, I haven't read it yet, but I wanted to. Um, but I just wanted to ask you if you read the Oxford and Stiletto series from her. Yeah. So actually, I um the Stiletto series I I love, and then the spinoff from that is something that I absolutely adore. And I think it's because of like the whole sports thing, like, because that was like yeah. something in my world. Like I, I totally related to it because that was something that I, I lived. And so I understood, you know, like even now, like I'm still a sports writer or periodically, like I still have, yeah. you know, I still cover sports. And so I, I was able to connect with um, the stiletto series. I, I loved, but then I jumped over. And I was like, as soon as I got through, it's, it's really fun. I like, I don't know if, it, if you guys, um, feel the same way but like the cool thing about um, like with like passion flicks great example um, when they optioned lick and and I kind of so yeah full disclosure I knew about it before yeah. the announcement came because Allie told yeah. me 
Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have late night conversations and sometimes and so she's like hey this is coming so you can get ready for it so I was kind of you know and so so um but I, I love being able to like take a book and be like okay I don't have to wait for the sequel like it's already there I can just keep going right and so that's how I felt about all of like you know being able to read the whole stiletto series and and all of these you know they're already there and you know I know everybody right. likes the latest book but like oh my god Kristen Proby like has I don't know how many books in the the way with me series like or the with me series yeah um you know so as soon as is they mention these books I'm like oh look at this there's like 15 books I get to read now like this is awesome so yeah that makes it really fun too when you can go and sometimes I, I read them I think I read the stiletto series out of order and that made it really weird because then it was like well these I knew these people had already you connected and then knew I knew this bits and yeah, yeah. And it, met, it kind of messed everything up but I still loved it so so yeah like yeah. but I, I just yeah I, I'm really like now I'm really into like being able to just like I just finished um I just finished all of the dive stage dive series last night I just couldn't stop reading. oh yeah I had to do it so yeah. I went you know Lick is the one that they they optioned but I read the whole series so I was like oh my, my god these are great like these are these are so cool so yeah. so yeah yeah, but I, I, I think I've actually, have I connected? I think I had suggested the Stiletto series when the last time Passion Flicks asked about, yeah, like recommendations. I was like, we should, we should look into that because that one's great. No, yeah, well, and that's how I felt when I, because I had read the Stiletto and Oxford a long time ago, and I reread, I reread um, Penelope and Cole's story just because I relate to Penelope. A little bit um but it was I was like this would be an awesome movie because of just like the friendships and like the differences between stiletto and oxford and just like the tensions in the office and like that kind of stuff like I feel like it would just be an awesome thing to just bring to life and especially it would be different because it would be in New York and stuff so it would be a little different um but yeah I feel like it would just be awesome if they brought those uh characters to screen it would be really cool. Oh, yeah. And that's what's so cool too is, is so. I, I think that, like what I absolutely love about being able to have passion flicks as uh, and, like it's it's not the same because I don't know like it, it kind of sucks sometimes like being in the entertainment industry and writing about it because you know about how things work and like you know that yeah, that's why I'm always like trying yeah. to like hint, subtle hints like, like hey every time you log in that helps build thing, you know, like all of these things, like for I mean, every time you log into passion flicks, like someone's counting that and that means something, you know, which is, it's true. Like yeah. all of that matters. And if you, you want something to, to happen, then you have to have, like, you have to show that you have these numbers. I mean, that's, that's just the way of the world, you know, but I absolutely love reading a book now that, you know, just randomly and being like, I could see this as a movie and passion flicks could make this into a movie. Like if I could, if I can, if somehow the message gets out there, like now we have a place where you could actually see it come to life. And, and cause I I feel this same way. Like I I could see Penelope's story and it would be so awesome. And I could see all of those stories and it's so cool. And you don't get that. Like, you know, like Netflix is great, but you're not going to see every story you can imagine come to life life on Netflix but with passion flicks like they they can do that and it is possible right. and it's just it's you know just having that that possibility is just so uh it just makes me want to read more books <laughs> and then you know yeah so yeah like all of a sudden I'm imagining things I never got to imagine before so yeah it just makes a better experience all around yeah absolutely that's why our reading list is so long <laughs> It's never ending. It's, it's never ending. Amen to that. <laughs> yep, yep. But now right. with the, dis- with the, like, because now with the discovery of passion flicks, we think back at films that were taken from books and analyzed them again and was like, passion flicks could have done it better because they would have stuck with that storyline and not take out those critical details that readers really pay attention to and right. so yeah yeah big I ones the same way, like, yeah I, 
think of a, a discovery of witches. Like that's, that's one yeah. that, where they've done a really good oh, job. Yeah. They've listened to it. Like they've really taken Deborah Harkness, um, everything she says and they make it happen, which I think is, is really cool because it is, is it, it like for a reader? I don't see how you could make, like, I, I think of Gabriel's Inferno. I think of A Discovery of Witches. Like, those are two of my favorite books. I could not imagine them being two-hour movies. There's, there's no way. Mm -mm. At least not, not, not the way that they should be, you know? Like, they, they could, but they shouldn't. So Right. Yeah. No, the, it's just, Passion Flix just does every book justice. It's mm -hmm insane the amount of talent that goes into it <laughs> and creativity oh yeah yeah Great. that's why we love it <laughs> yeah <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's see so i guess the next question would be um how did you find passion flicks wait you cut out a little bit what was the question uh how did you find passion flicks oh good question um so i definitely <laughs> heard it, it all started when um Gabriel's Inferno was optioned because that was that was how I discovered them but I wanted to know more about them before obviously before the movie came out and so before it even started filming yeah. I subscribed and was watching the movies and then um I I knew I wanted to um I knew I wanted to share what they were doing I was really impressed by it so that was when I did my first article, my interview with Tosca, because I really wanted to yeah. explore like what this was. Like I, it kind of become like my mission, I guess, because I really want to, yeah. you know, I want people to know what, it, what they're doing. And, and I don't understand why it's not getting the kind of attention that it deserves. And because it, as I watched, you know, I don't know, like there's, you'll see, I guess you, like if you, I mean, social media is like a place where I sometimes I vent about things. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves is like, everybody loves to pick things apart and talk yes. about like, you know, this is terrible. This isn't right. And I hate this and I hate it. And I'm like, you know, I don't like, for one, I just don't yeah. have time for that negativity in my life. Same. For two, you have to understand that there are, you know, that there's so much going on in right. any situation, you know, and the fact that passion flicks I mean just looking at like last year like they were able to produce you know they put out four motion pictures five short movies with the, the five quickies they produced they yeah. started filming you know two series and a movie in a pandemic like they were able to do these things and it was just right you know that was just that one year so when we talked I talked with Tosca god it was a year ago right now um you know, she was talking about filming all three of the Gabriels, you know, the, like they were filming different parts in different places. Yeah. And just, you know, just trying to, to, to envision the scope of that was just incredible. And so I was, I was just hooked. I was hooked from the start. And, um, you know, The Will was the first movie, the first new movie that came out. So that was the first one. I actually was, I was supposed to go to the premiere and then I had to go somewhere else. So I didn't get to go to the premiere. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just incredible. Like it, in, so I fell in love with it very quickly as soon. And I knew as yeah. soon as, as soon as SR vouched for them, that it was yeah. the right place because mm -hmm. it was, you know, I, I wouldn't imagine SR making any kind of decision that didn't make 200% sense because that's the way it is. Right. Um, mm -hmm. So that made me even more right. curious. So as soon as I saw that, I was like, I need to know about these people. I need to know what Passion Flicks is about because obviously it's something that I need to know. And right. there it is. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brittany and I found Passion Flicks because uh, of our mutual love for Jody Ellen Malpas. Um, we like her books and, um, uh, Brittany, I think you discovered her cause of the protector, right? Yeah. She had posted on her Instagram that the protector was going to be made by passion flicks. And I was like, what's passion flicks? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and then I was hooked. Yep. Yeah. I, I found it because I That's think so Jody had, 
where they were like getting to where they um, <clears throat> they had the list of books that they had option, but they were they hadn't made them yet. And I was a fan of the This Man series, and I saw that This Man was in lineup to hopefully be a production. And I was like, wait, they're making this into a movie? Wow, yeah. Hold on. And so and then I had to like research them and then, yeah, I got hooked and I started watching everything. And then I found out about Gabriel's Inferno because I had read it a long time ago. And then I found out that they were doing Gabriel's Inferno too. And I was like, wait, they're going to make this into a movie too? Hold on. <laughs> wait. <laughs> so. But they did it. They did it. And it was so good. So good. Yeah, so I, I can't imagine anywhere, anywhere else. And I just, I, I think it's just so cool that right. that has that kind of control to be able to say like, no, this should be six hours instead of a two hour movie. Like that, you just, you don't see that. I right. mean, you have to, like, it's so unheard of. And that's what I'm just so impressed by because it's not, it's not common. It's not something that you see, you know, I mean, you look at like, like Disney plus, I guess, would be an example. Like you see what they're doing with Marvel. Tosca is literally doing the same thing with passion flicks that Marvel is doing at Disney plus, but to a bigger extent yeah. when you think about, I mean, cause they're like, so as a comic book fan and as a superhero fan, like, you know, I look at some of the stories that are created and I think, man, if they took like this graphic novel and they made it in the same style of Gabriel's Inferno where they took six hours and instead of trying to come up with like three vastly different stories like the Dark Knight trilogy and they right. made a graphic novel that followed, you know, that was more kind of episodic but longer, you know, so it's not yeah. like driven where it's like, you know, episodes, it would be like, you know, like Gabriel's Inferno with like three movies that follow a story where you can really go in depth. Like I think right about other genres now and think about why like I wish they could be made the same way and yeah. that's like that's the whole it's and, and it's you're slowly starting to see that you know a discovery of witches perfect example of like how you can make that happen but it's so uncommon it's not you you know you don't normally see that kind of attention for one book you know a whole series about a book and the second season is about the second book and you know or the second three movies for one book and three movies for another like it's just so yeah. it, it really like it changes the way I see media now because I'm like wow this would be so much better if they did yeah. it the passion flicks way and not just mm -hmm. right a movie so kind of spoiled yeah. us <laughs> it, it is because <laughs> if you look back at like 50 shades you just kind of watch it and you're just like if Fifty yeah. Shades was broken up into like three parts for each movie, how much better Fifty Shades would have been? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, it's so you funny. Have gotten a whole I was thinking the same thing the other day. Like that, it would have been a completely different movie. Mm -hmm. Literally everything in the book probably would have been put in. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it would have made more sense narratively too, because so even when they like, like, yeah, yeah, because we were thinking too, if we wanted to even like go further back to like Twilight, mm -hmm. if you want to go that far back, like, I'm sorry, but as a Twilight fan, those movies did not do the books justice at all. As a Brooke fan of those, I was. I was disappointed because of how they were all portrayed and it was not to my liking, but that was just me. <laughs> so, you know, it, it just, it, it just goes to show. I mean, it, it, and it's funny because it also like, I, like I, I had talked to SR about this when I was, we were doing an interview and it's funny how much like some of the minor characters now in Gabriel's Inferno have come to life because of, the movies and now I want their stories whereas like the their stories have been there this whole time like I've read the books so so many times and Rachel has never been as interesting to me as she is now or mm -hmm. you know yeah. uh, Paul's story like Paul is there but now I'm like well, but you know Paul's story like let's go into that and it never 
for like it changed the way I saw that. And and so like with Fifty Shades, like I could see so many other stories spinning out of that, or I would have loved to have seen more of the other stuff that was happening. Or with Twilight, like you know, looking at Midnight Sun now, going wow, like if they had just gone and done that, like that would have been such a cool way of seeing it that would have changed the way I saw the whole movie because mm-hmm. you know, right? So yeah. We are spoiled. That's for sure. We are. We are. Now. <laughs> oh, <and> spoiled. <laughs> we are. <laughs> um, well, speaking of obviously like passion flicks some more, um, we have to ask you obviously this question, but um, what was your favorite interview with a passion flicks actor that you had or director? Well, you know, I have to say it was probably the first one that I did with um when it was just Tosca, Melanie, and Julio, that first one, because nobody knew what was going to happen. Like nobody, like yeah. I had seen the movie and it was about, about two weeks before it came out and they hadn't even seen the finished product. Um, and there was just this really special moment of like, nobody knew what was going to like, like I knew it was going to be big. I I yeah. I knew that and I and, and I think they had a sense of that but they didn't know like they didn't know because they weren't able to get the feedback from everybody yet so they didn't you know in, in their minds it was kind of like uh we don't want to piss people off like you yeah. know what if we didn't do a good job and I was like no no it really is like I was literally the first person who was telling them like guess what as a fan this is like the coolest thing I I never could have imagined it being that way and so it's um yeah so yeah, so that was that was probably my favorite just because it was so um it, it was so genuine and so like their emotion was so you know was so uh heartfelt because they didn't know yeah what was going on. They didn't know if they were, you know, and, and so it, after that, like every like I've talked to them since and it's so much fun yeah. because now they can kind of talk about you know the reception and they know that it it is a success, but that first one it was just like we hope you like it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we don't know. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> here you go. <laughs> exactly. That's awesome. Those two, I swear. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see. So of all the interviews that you've done, uh, what was like the most fun for you? Yeah. <laughs> You know, the, the one that I liked, it was really fun having Rhett when I was talking to him, like when he joined the group for the third movie, because that was like, he had a lot of fun energy, but at the same time, I really like, I think the one where it was the big interview with everybody was probably the most fun because I just love like, and bless Melanie's heart, but she's like, you guys like, let Sarah Beth ask a question. Cause like, they were just talking like, you know, pandemic, like they haven't seen each other. And so yeah. they just started talking. So like, as soon as they came on the screen, they were already talking to each other. And like, we were talking, you know, like, you know, I think Julio came on first. And so he was asking where I was and like, you know, where I was in, in the world so that he could figure out, you know, and so like, and it was like one in the morning for him and, you know, and, and you know, it's whatever time of day for Melanie. Yeah. Everybody starts coming in and then pretty soon they're just talking like and so I'm just sitting there going I love this like I absolutely you're have like no problem just sitting here <laughs> watching your conversations because it's they're just like yeah it's, I mean they genuinely love each other and so that it just it makes it even more it makes it even more enjoyable to watch them on screen like knowing that they don't they're not able to to, to be so friendly on screen yeah because their characters don't get along so that makes it even just it it's yeah. just that much more entertaining, but I have not laughed so much. Um, that, that second interview was so much fun. Yeah. It was so much fun to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <It was. laughs> They're all yeah, just, a I, hoop. I think, you know, and I have to say, oh, they are, they are. And, and Allie is so great getting them together. Like, I don't know how she wrangles yeah. them, but she does it. And it's just incredible. We don't know how Allie does so. most of the stuff she does. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's a super woman. She's a wizard. She yeah, is. No, she, she is. <laughs> she is. And she's, it's, it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's, um, I, I'm, I feel so, so blessed to have met her and that she's, you know, like she's so willing. Like I, I ask her the most random questions and then she, like, and she always has an answer. And, um, you know, and then, and then we end up, you know, we end up working on things like, you know, like announcements that are coming up and, uh, you know, yeah. things that have been announced and things that are, you're going to be finding out in coming weeks. And it's like, you know, she's like, I just, it's so great being able to talk to somebody. And I was like, yeah, it, it really is, you know, it's, 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 you know, it, it, and, and, um, it's, it, and it's also fun. Like I wrote an article, I wrote an article last two weeks, two weeks ago, two weeks ago about the Bridgerton thing, that New York times article. Yeah. And I was kind of, a, I was kind of annoyed by that article. So I wrote an article in response and then I did it's written one about her thing in that interview with Tosca that kind of irritated me. And she's like, <laughs> and she's like, you always say like things that I'm thinking. And I'm like, I'm glad I can say the things that, that you're thinking. Cause like, I got you. <laughs> I feel like I need to say them. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, Bertie and I are the, are the same. Yeah. Yeah. You get, I mean, it's, yeah. and it's, I think that's a, uh, I don't know. Like I, I love, like that I like that you know that we all kind of support passion flicks the way we do and, and it's uh you know it, it's not I don't know I, I it, it, some people would say like we're doing it like people do it just to gain favor and I'm like no I if I didn't like it I wouldn't do it like it's, it's because I actually like it and care about it that I want yes. to do it and it makes me want to defend it and talk about it and get people aware of it like that's that's what right. people do when they're fans so yeah 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 it's yeah, like a lot of people think that we did it for um like for to get passion flicks to notice us mm -hmm. i'm just like no we just genuinely love passion flicks and believe in the company it wasn't to get noticed we could care less <laughs> yeah it was just a blessing in disguise that we were able to get noticed <laughs> yes <Yeah. laughs> but again it's i mean your your positivity and just your enthusiasm and stuff like that's what people need like that's what it should be people should be celebrating that right. because you know and especially this year like what else can you do we're all stuck at home like you know what I mean like it's, right. it's, it's <laughs> not like you would be if you had a convention to go to then you'd be doing this at the convention but we don't have places to go right oh so of course you're gonna make the most of it you know like that's just the way it is yeah. So, yeah, we've, um, it, it's been challenging, but fun to do this because we're, again, like you said, we're sharing the enthusiasm and the love for the company and we're defending it because we love it so much. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, that's all we want is just to share the love for it. We're not doing it for recognition or for favor. It's because we simply do it out of the goodness of our heart because we love it so much. Um, but unfortunately there are people that don't see it that way. And so we get that back side of things and it can turn ugly really quick. But Brittany and I have always just tried to either respond to it in a very kind gesture or just not even responding to it at all because again this is about love and support of a company and we don't need the negativity because if you're negative about something then you shouldn't be part of a loving community but that's just my opinion on it yep. <laughs> but, <laughs> so you're absolutely right you are absolutely right and with all the stuff going on in the world that's you know get upset about you know if people are upset that you're doing that and, and that's you know doing something you enjoy then that says more about them right. unfortunately than you know so yep. yeah yeah it's just silly but yeah, but yeah and I get it yeah yeah Brittany and I try to tell our followers too that um even for them with them sharing their fandom and love for the movies and books too if you have, if you're going into the Passion Flicks community wanting recognition and fandom and all this other weird 
title stuff, you have the wrong mindset because you shouldn't go into it thinking those things. You should just go into it saying, I just want to share my love and appreciation. And if I get noticed, cool. If I don't, that's cool too. I'm just sharing it to other fans. Right. So, yeah. No, yeah. that's, that's, that's how it is. And, and, you know, honestly, like that's, it's that genuine sense that makes such a big difference because I mean, right. you know, I like hearing Brittany talking about the walking dead. Like I, I have such a connection to the walking dead and people are like, wow, like, that's so cool. Like you can, you know, and I'm like, yeah, like I have phone numbers, like I could text people yeah. and I do. And sometimes like, you know, and, and in sharing, you know, like in texting people, like sometimes texting makes more sense for, you know, depending on the conversation, but like, yeah, you know, they're like, oh, hey, wait till you see X, Y, and Z happening in the season. Like, you're going to love it. And they say that because they know that, that, you know, you're a trustworthy person and you're not trying to, you know, you're not, you're, you're coming from a good place. And so as, you know, as, as a journalist, that's important to me to maintain that. So it's not, yeah. you know, like, you know, people are like, there's always that, like that jealousy, like you get to talk to these people and you get to them. Yeah. Yeah. But they're just people. And that's all they really right. want is just to be like, they're people. And, and yeah. if you approach them, from that, they want to be treated like people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so it's, you know, of course, like, of course you get starstruck and of course, yeah. you know, like you're, you know, like it, it gets hard to like, sometimes, you know, like you don't want to ask the wrong question and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to say something wrong, but you know, it's, it's not like that. And so it's always, you know, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it's a balance. It's, it's definitely a balance yeah. to, to get that right. Because you want to, you know, do a good interview. You want to bring, you know, you want to um, make everybody look good, you know? So like, you don't want to ask questions that, yeah. you know, you don't want to ask. I mean, nobody, people, you know, people want to, you know, do you, you want to get personal and it's like you don't want to get personal like that's not what they're here for like you know you don't ask your doctor right. about their love life like that's you know like these are actors. right yeah these yeah actors like you, they're, they're people you don't ask random people about stuff but right. um, yeah yeah but it's just you know that's always my approach is and that's why I think that's why I love when they just talk like yeah because you're just like a topic you guys talk about <laughs> Yeah. And I, and you just sit back and look because that's the real, like, that's real. That's not like, right. you know, me asking a question and then have, you know, like playing the party line. I mean, it's very genuine and especially with, with, you know, with Gabriel's Inferno and, and I can't wait to talk to, you know, all of the other, like I've got uh, working on interviews with, you know, some of these other movies that they're, they're going to be bringing to life. And it's like, I, I, I can't wait to do that. Like, I can't wait to talk to everybody. But, um, you know, it's so much fun when you just let them talk about what they want to talk about. And then you hear that genuine passion that they have. And it's not just, you know, tell me about your favorite experience filming. And it's like, everybody asks that question, but to listen yeah. to their banter and then get, the, you know, their nicknames for each other or their, you know, the funny stories like that's, that comes out when you let them do it. And that, yeah, right. that's, that's what I love. Yeah. That's what uh, Brittany and I have tried to bring to the table with any interview that we do, like from our past ones to, you know, the future ones is we want it as authentic as possible. Like we don't want to ask the typical fan questions. Like we want to just ask it and then we want the interview to not even be an interview. We want it to just be like, like this, like a conversation, yeah. just like speaking about what you like and certain things that you have an opinion on or whatever it may be, but it's just, we want it to just be a natural like hangout. Just like you're just yeah. sitting with a friend at like a coffee shop and just hanging out and just talking. And so. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We would definitely get starstruck though. If. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our first interview. It is. It is hard. Our first interview was we were just like, <laughs> it was fun though it was it, it was it, fun once the, once the nerves were gone it was like okay we're we're just talking it's here we're good <laughs> fine 
It is all yeah, good. It's, it's always hard, but it's once you get like once you get into it, it's easy. It's, it gets yeah. it gets easier, and then you know, like every it 